obviously. The border is a story that we cover extensively, no matter the time of year. And border apprehensions, they hit record highs in December. Clearly, there's still that dispute going on between the state government and the federal government, trying to figure out what comes next. That's right. So that's that's why in today's leading essay this morning, we have Congressman Tony Gonzalez joining us live. Good morning, Congressman. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. So, Congressman, what is your current perspective of the problem at the border? Yeah, it's a mess, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Uh, here in San Antonio, we we feel the brunt of that. These images on Eagle Pass and and throughout the throughout the uh, the border that they they quickly come to to San Antonio and they gobble up all of our city resources. They consume our airport. They consume our first responders. I'd say we are a very compassionate city, and there's a way to fix this. And the way to fix this is to surge immigration judges immediately to the border and get people's cases heard in days, not years. And if somebody doesn't qualify for asylum, which is nine out of 10, you immediately deport them uh, unless you do that. And oh, by the way, President Biden, I, I, I appreciate some of the, the words that he's starting to come around to, but he can do this today. So yes, Congress has a role to play, but the president can enact some, some things today that will alleviate this stress and deport people that are here illegally. So, Congressman, there's clearly a conflict between the federal government and the state of Texas happening really close to San Antonio and Eagle Pass, even after that Supreme Court ruling. So where do we go from here? I hate to see it because on the ground, these law enforcement office, uh, offices and, and honestly, just communities in general, we're really tight knit. You know, you work together, whether it's state, whether it's local, whether it's federal and what is happening, the politics is starting to pull us apart. And at the ground level, you know, the boots on the ground that are doing the work are in this are starting to get in this weird position. I'd also say, too, there are many people throughout the country that are have this weird uh, fixation with the civil war. And I'm going, yeah, stay out of my district. You know, I don't want you coming here and lighting a powder keg. A leader, I think back to my time in the military, a leader de-escalates a situation. A leader finds solutions. And that's what I'm looking for in Congress, people to work with that want to find solutions and the administration to keep us all safe. Now, you mentioned that you're starting to appreciate the president's terms, especially in relation to the border. In the last couple of days, obviously, he has issued that statement on the possibility of bipartisan reform. So you mentioned that he could, I assume you were referring to the possibility of an executive order. What does that executive order look like and how could that take effect, say, before November? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Every administration has done what I'm about to say here. The Trump administration called it the uh, the heart program. Essentially, what they do is they surge they 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 surge immigration judges and they have courts on the border. So you're not waiting till they go to Pittsburgh or they go to Denver or, or wherever they may go and have to worry about caseloads there. They get their case immediately heard. Obama administration did the same thing. And then once that case isn't, you know, isn't uh, they don't qualify for asylum, you don't bus them to different places or you don't send them different places. You get them on a plane and you send them back to their country of origin. Every president has had to do this. And and and, Joe, and President Biden will be no different. It's just a matter of when he's willing to do that. They're starting to do some of that, but I've told them they need to be deporting people by the thousands, not by the dozens. And oh, by the way, you, you can do this in a compassionate way. What needs to happen is we need to encourage legal immigration. We need to encourage those that are legally trying to come over for work visas, legally trying to enter the United States. There's no talk of that. You're part of the Problem Solvers Caucus. Do you think that there is a realistic bipartisan solution before November? Before November, I do. I, I absolutely do, because I think America has had enough. I know here in San Antonio, we've had enough, and we've had enough also with the finger pointing. I mean, people just want this solved. They want they want to feel safe in their communities. They, they want to be able to, uh, to, to, to feel, you know, get back to normal, if you will. And so the politics is certainly going to play into it. On one end, you know, it's not enough. On the other end, it's too much. It, there's always a reason to vote no, is what I've learned in Congress. There's always a reason to vote no, but it's going to take real leadership to be able to, to power through that. But it also can't just be window dressing. You can't just get a deal together to say that you got a deal. And if nothing changes, that doesn't help the situation either. But I do think, Max, that there's an opportunity here it, that, that uh, members of Congress can come together and find meaningful solutions. But we got a long way to go. Uh, clearly, the Senate has had its issues getting its package together. But, but I am, I am uh, optimistic about it. 
And real quick, Congressman, before we go, the presidential election coming up in November, coming up fast. So what are your expectations? Oh, it's going to be a circus. It already has been a circus. I think uh, the closer we get to the election, the more rhetoric is going to be is going to be infused in, into the politics on all sides. It's usually what happens during a presidential, and it seems like we're getting more of that. I, I'm looking at it through the lens of what can we do to help San Antonio and the surrounding areas today. I hope more people uh, kind of view the world through that lens and find solutions. All right, Congressman Tony Gonzalez, thank you so much for your time this morning. Anyone who missed any of this interview can watch it in its entirety on KSAT.com. We continue to cover extensively what is happening at the U.S.-Mexico border for a variety of reasons, including the fact that our community, it feels that direct impact. So at 8 a.m., we were joined live by Republican Congressman Tony Gonzalez. And yesterday, we spoke with Democrat Congressman Henry Cuellar. Here's our conversation. Congressman Cuellar, thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, the border has been top of mind across the country and, of course, here across the state of Texas. So right off the bat, what is your perception of the current state of the border? You know, we do have a problem with the uh, number of migrants. Uh, when you look at the number of migrants that have come in in the last three years, we've had historic numbers. In fact, December, we were looking at, uh, you know, we saw over 302,000 migrants in one month. So we do have a problem, and we got to make sure that we address this not only on the one yard, one yard line called the U.S. Mexico border, but also on the 20 yard line. What do I mean by that? getting Mexico to do more to slow down not only people coming to the U.S., stopping people coming to the U.S. border, but also the drugs that are coming into the U.S. Now, there's also an ongoing struggle between federal and state government regarding the borders and other states taking sides. So where do we go from here? You know, it's very unfortunate because, look, does the state play a role on border security? Absolutely, they do. But they cannot try to uh, say we're the ones who are going to secure the border and we're going to kick out Border Patrol, which are under federal law and under the Supreme Court decision back in 2012, at the Arizona case, the Border Patrol has the authority to secure the border. So the state just can't kick them out. Now, does the state play a role? Yes, they ought to work together. DPS, the state military, uh, should be working with border patrol, uh, border patrol hand in hand and not kick one out. They ought to do it together as a team. And Congressman, you talked about the 20 yard line. You recently had a trip to Mexico. But was the trip fruitful? You know, it was. You know, the, the Mexican president, the secretary, uh, the cabinet, the national security cabinet, uh, you know, when they say Mexico is not doing anything, you know, people are wrong. Uh, can they do more? Absolutely, they can do more. But let me tell you some of the things that they've been doing. In December, we're seeing 10 to, tw uh, 10 to 12,000 people a, a day. Now it's gone down to about half. So the question is, why have the numbers go down? Did we build more border wall? Did we see more of the Texas buoys? Uh, did we see more border patrol? The answer is no. What happened is Mexico started taking people off the trains uh, that were coming into the U.S. They're getting people from the southern, uh, you know, our southern border, uh, their northern border, and then taking them down to the area where Guatemala's at. They're, they got people, they're stopping people at the southern border. They actually have more National Guard and immigration officers than we have border patrol. Uh, at least about 15,000 more Border Patrol than we have. So the reason the numbers have gone down is because Mexico is doing its part in what I call the 20-yard the line. Can they do more? Yes. Can they keep it consistent? Sometimes they don't, and that's where we need to uh, focus on along what we do at the border. Okay, switching gears here. It's no surprise a presidential election is the top of everyone's mind. So take us through, what is your relationship like with President Joe Biden? And do you have any concerns about the election coming up in November? Well, you know, the, the, the thing to keep in mind is, look, I, I support President Biden. Do I disagree with them on the border? Absolutely. Uh, you know, he, I can tell you that in December of uh, uh, when he won, uh, he won November 2020, December 2020, I uh, talked to his transition team. I started talking to the transition team and said, hey, you got to look at what's happening. I, I'm getting information that they're that the migrants are starting to stage across the river and they're coming in because they think they can come in under President Biden. 
And then I talked to them after the inauguration and, and I kept, kept talking to them. But then I saw that the White House policy was more interested in processing people than actually stopping people. And that's when I say, I think we got a problem with the policy decision. I support President Biden, but when it comes to this area, I think he needs to uh, definitely make a course uh, alignment or, or a course adjustment. In, in terms of this course adjustment, I mean, you're a Democratic congressman at the border. Have you had direct communication with him in, in the past year? I mean, like you said, we just set a record in December. Have you reached out? Have you talked to the vice president at least? Uh, well, not on uh, them. The last time I talked to the president is when I flew with him from Washington to El Paso. That was about a year ago. So I spent that time on the flight talking to him. And I, I think he knows what to do, but he's got to let his policy advisors understand that, you know, we as Democrats, we can talk about border security and still be respectful of the immigrants' rights. Think about that. How many times do you hear Democrats talk about border security? Two words border security. Uh, we can talk about strong border security. And I can tell you, whether it's in San Antonio or all the way down to the border in Webb County, along the border, you have people that want to have strong border security, still be respectful of the migrants' rights, but we can talk about border security. Well, Congressman, thank you so much for your time this morning. I know you have to get back to D.C., but thank you for making time for us. And if all of our viewers, you want to watch this interview in full, it will be posted on our website, ksat.com.